Hello, everyone, and welcome to season two of Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. On this show, we talk about the stories that have helped us rise in our work, businesses, and in our everyday lives. I want to stop for a moment and tell you how much fun I'm having doing this Nashville series. It was a dream to interview amazing businesswomen in the city, to sit next to them where they work and watch them in their element. As you know, I am going on location these days, so I hope you don't mind maybe some customers talking in the background or maybe a hair dryer or two going on as well. It is all good. If you're enjoying this new Nashville series, please reach out to me and let me know. Send me an email at info at kareensanderford.com or DM me on Instagram or Facebook. So this week we are back on track with two gals who decided to start a business right here in Nashville. They are Keila Trevino and Brooke Allison, two women who are making Nashville beautifully handsome, one haircut at a time. They are the owners of Scouts Barbershop, the only female owned and run barbershop in Nashville. It was fascinating to hear their story about why they chose Nashville to start a business. Listen as these two longtime friends tell us their philosophy on hiring, work-life balance, and what makes their partnership work. Just a quick reminder here, if you hear about a product or a book on Rising Stories podcast that you'd like to purchase, please use the links provided in the show notes, or you can find them at kareensanderfer.com under podcast. This helps support Rising Stories. Thanks so much. And now, here is my conversation with Keila and Brooke. Thanks for coming on, Rising Stories. I'm so glad y'all allowed me to come into this awesome place. We are at your Gulch, the yes, Gulch, the Gulch location, location. Mm-hmm. in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And this is Scout's Barbershop, mm-hmm. right? What got you guys into... The barbershop business. <laughs> is that uh, like a fun, is there a fun story behind this? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, so Brooke and I have been friends for 17 years now, I think. So wow. we met way back when uh, I was in high school and she was in college and we met in a small town and um, became friends. And then years later, we became roommates in Seattle and I had decided to go to beauty school, and I was about 20 when I went to beauty school, and Brooke was a geologist. <laughs> oh, wow. That's yeah. very different. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I had moved to Seattle to um, go into consulting. I mean, that's what I was in school for when we met, mm-hmm. and uh, and then Keila wanted to go to the um, to Jean Moret's school, mm-hmm. after, which is a really high-end school, and in Seattle, Seattle for mm-hmm. hair. Um, so she called me one day and um, asked if I had a room for a roommate, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we became roommates in Seattle. Shared a one-bedroom apartment for, yeah. <laughs> for oh, a while. Fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I went to school and then started working uh, in a barbershop out there, um, which was funny because that was not my background with school whatsoever. I hadn't, like, cut a guy's hair like once in school yeah. so, and then started so you mostly did women but yeah, then mm-hmm. yeah but then just jumped into the barbershop world um and just learned from great people out there and had great experiences and uh then I ended up moving to Austin Texas uh, my folks moved out there and I just wanted the change and so I ended up leaving in 2011 and then a couple years later Brooke ended up in Nashville Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So you were here first. Yep. So you were, yes. you came to Nashville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think we were just chatting on, like, Facebook Messenger, and she had moved out here to open up a hot yoga studio. Okay. And so she had gotten into the business world out here and making connections and seeing how quickly Nashville was growing and what it had, what it didn't have. And uh, she saw the great need for, like, a cool unisex barbershop because that didn't really yeah. exist out here. And so she was like would you do it with me? And I was like, oh, sure. But I was in the process of buying a house and kind of putting roots down in Austin. But I flew out here to visit and checked it out and loved Nashville and then mm-hmm. very quickly realized I needed to, like, be here to yeah. to be a part of it. Um, what year was that? 2013. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, well, and then I ended up moving out here not till 2014. So, and then Scouts opened uh, over Labor Day weekend in t- September 2014. So. Wow. Mm-hmm. What was your first location? 
East Nashville. East Nashville, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. East Nashville okay. And yeah. then uh, Sylvan Park uh, the next year, and then the Gulch just opened this last March, and then we just opened Franklin in May. Oh, wow. And then we're working on our Germantown location that'll be open this spring, that's hopefully. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Why why Nashville? I mean, like, what do you think about, what was it about Nashville when you came and when you were here thinking this is a great place to be in, or what were, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, um, I came out um, maybe seven years ago and then um, just on a vacation or a trip to see the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> yeah. With, um, I was in a band in Seattle called Side Saddle, a female fronted <laughs> <laughs> band. So we did a lot of Opry style shows. And um, the other singer and I came down um, for fun. And that trip, I just had a lot of fun and thought that Nashville was really welcoming and really easy mm-hmm. to get around and um, of course even then it was way different than now um, and then totally. we made yeah. that mm-hmm. pilgrimage again the second year a second a year later and that trip um, we kind of connected with another Seattle musician in East Nashville and we set up some shows to do so we actually kind of hung out in the East Nashville culture and um, I just remember being out at Three Crow the only bar one of the only bars there (laughs) one night and everybody talking about East Nashville just being about to explode and it reminded me of um, the neighborhood that we used to hang out in in Seattle called Ballard and we'd seen it change over 10 years from being the the kind of grungy place that you know people don't really go except for the artists and musicians Mm -hmm. (laughs) to being the place that's now developed Mm -hmm. like from head to toe it's just you can't do anything new there yeah so I'd always kind of thought I wanted to open a something someday but um so seeing East Nashville and just the hype about it I was like this could be my chance to do something that hasn't been done here Mm -hmm. so I liked East Nashville and the people and I just had always kind of wanted to teach yoga and open a yoga studio somewhere and when I was here it seemed like there just wasn't much compared to Seattle Mm -hmm. and nothing in East Nashville at the time so I um, so yeah I came out um, a few times to do a teacher training in in Nashville I ended up meeting so many great people who wanted to help I think that's a theme it (laughs) is is. people are so helpful and wanting you to come yeah and um, so I noticed that and by the end of the training um, you know I was kind of on the fence because I had no reason to leave Seattle I loved it there and I had everything that I wanted there but I also had this other life in Nashville now that I loved and the possibility. So it was a it was a big risk. I had to sell everything to move and just pick up and leave my corporate job. That was a really good job. But I remember thinking, you know, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it. And yeah. somebody else will do it and I'll think I could have done that. <gasps> right. You know? And mm-hmm. yeah. I think it was that moment. And just the thought of, like, if I just go back to normal life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> You're gonna be dying to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, die on the vine, thinking the, what could have been, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, all those months I'd just been, you know, every time you're in the car, every time there's stillness, I'd just been dreaming up this studio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so that's, that's what brought me here. Yeah. And like I said, immediately I was like, there's so many things that haven't been done, especially at the time in East Nashville. So, yeah. It was a, it was over a year that we talked about East Nashville in a barber mm-hmm. shop and um, and <clears throat> Keila had heard a lot about Nashville mm-hmm. um, and had been wanting to come out so yeah so finally it was like I now know how to open a business and I yeah. I have a location I think we should just do it <laughs> <laughs> you already had you had already scouted well, out <laughs> no yeah, pun intended yeah. the, the opened, location yeah they yeah. opened uh, we opened the first shop next to the yoga studio, basically. In the okay. Same so that's your mm-hmm. yoga studio. Um, or not anymore. Yeah. Well, now it's moved across the street, but um, we were we were side by side pretty oh, much. No. Okay. The Fofo building. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. have another, a total other business. Mm-hmm. Yes. And mm-hmm. then your partner's with Keila with Scout. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you really are like a, yeah, a business owner, like... Bang! Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jumped right in, and I, I, I'm guessing that the location in East Nashville just really t- took off. Oh, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like, yeah, it's. I mean, such a blessing that we wow. got the space that we did. And we even considered uh, the building that Barista Parlor's in. 
and that's a little bit further down Galadin, mm-hmm. you know, right. we were like kind of back and forth, but we just uh-huh. saw so much potential with the, the fluffo building and, but it was a little riskier in some mm-hmm. ways too, cause it was huge and older, you know, but yeah. it just is, mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely our flagship and yeah. our just and you're right there <laughs> in the main drag and uh-huh. everyone sees you. I mean, who would have thought there'd be like 25 condo buildings being built like right there. No you kidding, know? right? So, like, mm-hmm. It's just booming mm-hmm. over there. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know how they're going to keep up, but that's great for you guys. Yeah. And yeah. same thing with Germantown and then the Gulch, which mm-hmm. is where we are, this location. Mm-hmm. It used to be, an, this place used to be an old train depot. Yep. Train depot. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that um, this is a great location. And you've got, as I was driving in, you can see downtown. I'm like, this is an awesome location. Mm-hmm. They're so close because anybody can hop over and oh, get yeah. their haircut. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, a year ago before we were here, it's like, this is where bumps slept. You know, like, exactly. so it's always a risk when you go into developing areas, you know, and all of our girls carry mace and <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but all of a sudden overnight it's like it's completely reformed yeah and there's coffee shops yeah. mm-hmm. there's restaurants mm-hmm. and really you know talking about apartments but now condos are like within walking distance of where you guys are yeah are big high rise mm-hmm. Con- mm-hmm. i mean uh yeah. sorry not condos hotels are, oh, are coming right. up yes. big uh-huh. high rise hotels yep. are coming in within walking distance of you guys mm-hmm. so that's really good too yeah yeah tell me what what about connecting and being in par- in partnership has helped like what are the pros and cons or you know if someone's thinking right now thinking i want to open up a business should i do it by myself or should i go with a partner like, mm-hmm. what are the pros and cons of that? Um, well, I would s- a lot of times, like, if you talk to advisors and whatnot, partnerships typically don't work. Um, it's like any other marriage or relationship, you know, where there is a lot of different personalities, viewpoints, ideas. And so a lot of advice um, I was given was like, well, good luck. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, but, you know, Brooke and I thankfully had a foundation of a very long friendship yes. and we have the same faith and, you know, we have, I like any relationship, we had a lot in that foundation, but, you know, we've had our squabbles and our, you know, conflict like anybody else, you know, and communicate, communicate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't understand. I think that, um, cause I, I'm a business and, and life coach and, I've been called in to, like, you know, kind of been the mediator, like, okay, let's mm-hmm. put a, let's put all our cards on the table. What's really happening here? Right. You know, mm-hmm. why isn't this partnership working? And mm-hmm. it usually is communication way back in, you know, in the years or months before thinking, well, I started resenting or I, you know, I felt like you took more of the money or, you know, whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. But just that one little, if they would have just said, hey, you know, I'm feeling like I'm, you know, getting slighted or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling like, you know, whatever the case is, it's just all about communication because it could have been nipped in the bud like a long time ago, right? Right, right. So I think that that's very important, like communication mm-hmm. and also just, you know, knowing that people make mistakes, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, y'all, I'm sure y'all have made some crazy you know, like, oh, why do we do that? But, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not, because this is so such a successful business. I mean, did you all have anything where you were like, oh, man, I wish I'd have done, we could have done that differently. We would have done it this way. Is there anything that comes to mind? Um, I, my biggest things that come to mind uh, right off the bat are people who have hired. Like, the people make your business, I feel. And Mm -hmm. I've made a lot of mistakes with who I've hired or who I've let stick around longer than I should have, you know. And I think that's, for me, my biggest regrets is not standing up for myself, not standing up for my team and what makes the healthiest environment and just dealing with the conflict and having to bite the bullet and, like, let let someone go. someone go. Because, I mean, it's so true yeah. to have one person can be poison in the well for your mm-hmm. entire staff. And then the minute that person's gone, you're just like, oh, you could physically feel how much better everything is. Yeah. And you just wish, why hadn't I done that sooner, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Or we have found ourselves in with a new business and opening several others of being desperate for staff and then feeling like, well, 
I, I don't, you don't trust your gut. Yeah. And so you end up going ahead and hiring someone you don't feel that great about, but you just need a body. Yeah. And then having that just bite it always in the butt. Backspires. Always. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go with your gut and just, and, and really, I think that we all have those, even, I mean, as women and business owners, you have that intuitive feel, you know, and you're mm-hmm. like, you should just, yeah. Yeah. Trust it. And, trust it. But we always have some reasoning as why we don't, you know, but I a hundred percent of the time when I haven't trusted my gut, I ended up really regretting it down the road. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Brooke, do you find that with your other business as well? Or do you hire, or are you just kind of a sole proprietor there and you, do you hire other mm. teachers? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'll say, I don't think we've had an, too many bad no, seeds. No. So Keila's done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And every time we've given chances, it's because we just want to see the potential in someone. Yes, yeah. yeah. that is true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lot of teachers at the studio, probably over 20, and I have uh, one gal who's a manager. So, um, yeah, that's, I don't, <laughs> I do always say that the yoga studio is kind of a walk in the park compared to the scouts. <laughs> because there's, well, the, less the teachers, yoga, the I mean, less teacher comes yeah. and goes on, you know, and there's not really much interaction, um, you know, and they're doing what they love. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. people here are doing what they love too, a different. Well, and yes. to be honest, uh, yoga teachers are far different than stylists. Stylists. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Almost to the polar uh, opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Stylists are a special breed of, yes. of humans. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we do, we've said many times that conflict with staff or people is our biggest stress yeah. if any I mean it's not all the time but when mm-hmm. something goes wrong there it's worse than anything because you take it, it so personal yes, yeah. yes. so and knowing like to... that your team is you know like you said there's that dark cloud over right. the whole mm-hmm. you know location and the team and you're like you want it to make it better but then like you said there is that fine line because you're wanting to um, you know give someone the benefit of the doubt you wanting them mm-hmm. to grow as a mm-hmm. person and as a as a uh, stylist or as a manager and yeah. um but at the same time you got to do what's best for the company mm-hmm. absolutely right? and because i've found too like i really like to uh stick to the principles of hiring of hiring for a person not skill because mm-hmm. you can't change their personality but you can teach them so I find, you know, we've taken risks on people who are straight out of school or don't have that much experience, but I just feel like you are going to be such a good fit. And that yeah. is so much more important personality and work ethic and things like that over skill because mm-hmm. skill can be taught. So, yeah. and I did a bunch of hiring for my last employer, a uh, bird's barbershop out in Austin. So I guess that's translating into my thoughts. I did yeah. hiring for them. So I've been hiring for a long time and I guess that's why I, I carry that around of all the people mm-hmm. I would do things differently with but (laughs) yeah yeah more so yeah there than here maybe Mm -hmm. yeah well so what you know what's working in in your business like what's like man we're really rocking and rolling in this area Hmm. I would say just um it's just been rewarding to see to have good reviews and to have clients and retention and Mm -hmm. just you know, a lot, since w- when we first opened, we were the only barbershop or unisex barbershop, I could say, mm-hmm. in Nashville. And since wow. then, or, you know, whatever you want to categorize it as, um, mm-hmm. classic barbershop or sort of hip barbershop, mm-hmm. now there have been many mm-hmm. to open. Mm-hmm. And many right around us, and sometimes uh, some of our favorite staff have left to go. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and, and everyone one of them has come back. Has come back. <laughs> Okay. And all yeah. of our clients, you so know, we good. worry that we'll lose clients and we haven't, we haven't slowed down at all. And even mm-hmm. sometimes clients will go try somewhere and come back. Yeah. So I feel yeah. like that's. What do you think is key? What's, what's well, that? I don't, I don't know if it's the key, but what I find interesting is we are the only female run and owned mm. barbershop. Like, yeah in the whole city. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that has something Yay. to say about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Power. That's right. <laughs> well, and I think that, um, just the background and experience that you guys bring to the table mm-hmm. for these stylists and the, you know, your employees, 
and your managers yeah. just, I think that speaks volumes. Yeah. Well, and I think that's why Brooke and I make such excellent partners is because we're both very different and have very different backgrounds. You know, I've had 15 years experience in hair and then she yeah. has, I mean, business and math and like that's a completely awesome. different skill set. And so, and hence that's why sometimes we have conflict too, you know, because we see things very differently. Yeah. But I think ultimately that's what's made us successful is because we mm-hmm. really fill all the boxes together and personally, I would never open a business by myself. <laughs> like, yeah, yes. yeah. I, Coming back to that, it, yeah. So thankful to have mm-hmm. a partner. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but you know, in the in the success of our staff being happy, that's just been a value and a goal to us from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And we 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 try to create a family atmosphere and a welcoming atmosphere for both clients and our staff and everyone who works for us has felt that and that's what they miss when they leave Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Mm -hmm. um you know and we're present we pour ourselves into it we work the desk Mm -hmm. we're here so that's different than some some owner who's never there right yeah who leaves it to the managers and Mm -hmm. then but it's not translated so obviously y'all's good goodness and you know smartness and all that comes through to your staff and Mm -hmm. so that's good yeah and then to the customer yeah which is yeah. your your main you know bread and butter mm-hmm. and who you want to impress yeah mm-hmm. so it sounds like it's working yeah Definitely working. I think so yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so what about your personal lives like how do you juggle all this <laughs> I know you have a <laughs> Keila has a child you have a baby mm-hmm. yeah almost a year old under now. one yeah uh-huh. so yeah I mean, it's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is not easy. That mm-hmm. is an understatement. But it's, I don't know, you just learn how to do it. Yeah. It's phenomenal. And you have to really give yourself a lot of grace and a lot of time. Like, I've just been reflecting over how insane this last year has been. But, like, it's awesome now, you know? Yeah. But there were some definitely rocky parts this last year. And,. I don't know. I wouldn't trade it though for yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, both neat. Brooke and I were single when this all started. Okay. And, yeah. Wow. And now, yeah, Brooke is married and, um, I married a baby and like, yeah. it's been, it's been a journey, like an insane three years. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't stress that enough. <laughs> Yes, my husband says no more. Yes, so does my husband. <laughs> no more, no more stores. Yeah. No more scouts. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. well, but we found this great location, yeah. this great yeah. space. Uh huh. Yeah. We just yeah. have to one more, just one more, babe. Like, one more. No more after this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's like a great country song within y'all's story. <laughs> yeah. You are. Definitely. Imagine. Yeah, yes. that's funny. <laughs> Someone needs to write that. Oh man. So you juggle being married and to another business. I don't know how you do that. Cause that's like a whole nother, that's like a baby mm-hmm. having another, you know, business. Yeah. you, I don't know how you do that. Like right brain, well, left brain. And then you've got to, you know. yeah, it's, it's different. And I, um, you know, I wish I had more time in the day, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but, um, like I said, the yoga studio is, is very pleasant and I have a good, a good help mate there um and then we have great managers at each of the shops now so Mm -hmm. we're able to step back a little bit um yeah so yeah it's a lot but if you love it it doesn't feel like work yes Mm -hmm. totally Mm -hmm. that's good Mm -hmm. yeah so what um what's the best business advice you ever got um I would say from my I guess I consider them like mentors now my old bosses at birds I've became really good friends with them. Michael and Jason, they're a partnership that actually has been very successful. They are childhood friends as well. And oh, wow. always, I was kind of like, if they can do it, Brooke and mm-hmm. I can do it. And they've been awesome to us, really good to us. Um, and so uh, they just always kept coming back to what has made them successful and what they believe every year that goes on is to treat your people well. Like if mm. you treat your staff well, like you'll everything will work out you know and I found that very true with us like when we give back to our employees and we treat everyone really well and with respect and kindness and like what else can we do for you what else can we tweak to make this better like Mm -hmm. constantly open to uh in like feedback from them always you know like anyone can have great advice for you so I think we're very open to every single person that works for us um that has just been 
wonderful yeah. and very simple, but I, I don't think a lot of businesses do that. So yeah. they think they're right. They don't accept criticism. They don't, you know, accept change. They, so I just think pride can really get in the way of mm-hmm. that. And so, yeah, I guess that's what I'd have to say. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to that, Brooke? Um, I don't, I can't think of anything. I don't think I got any advice. <laughs> Just jump in. <laughs> Do it yourself. <laughs> I could probably think of some for others. You could now. probably, yeah, you could give, you it, could give, it give advice yes. to others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your tip? What would be your tip? If someone's uh, out there going, I want to start, I want to start a business, you know, the mm-hmm. whole, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I was joking when I said do it yourself, but I think Brooke is the perfect example of that. Like she's willing to do anything for like, if the toilet's broken, she'll go fix it. Like, you know, (laughs) like, and she's just like, Oh, I'll do it. Like, you just, you just do it. I don't know. It's (laughs) phenomenal. So yeah. When I first got here, I didn't have any help. I didn't have anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't, there weren't, there wasn't even Amazon. There weren't stores around any snatchel, you know? So it (laughs) it was a lot of just, you just don't have time to procrastinate. You just have to do everything mm-hmm. right away. Don't wait for somebody else to do it or, mm-hmm. um, you know, bother delegating it. But at the other, on the other end, I would say delegating is and having resources and knowing your resources is super important. So mm-hmm. over time, as I began to find resources, whether it be Costco or <laughs> someone to call on for help or just realizing I can't teach 17 classes a week. It's wearing me out. <laughs> it's better for me to delegate. So mm-hmm. know where you can delegate and know where your time is, you know, best spent. Um, and I guess I remember one piece of advice was keep your emails short. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's like good. Highly successful people, just uh-huh. short emails. But, yeah. you know, sometimes we just spin our wheels on things and it's just mm-hmm. trying to trying to see where we can stop worrying and where we can just put energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So what are you guys loving these days that are, that's like saving your life or maybe it's like something that you just texted all your girlfriends, like you gotta try this. What are some things that y'all are loving? Oh my goodness. Um, Every time I listen to the happy hour and they talk about the three things they love, I always have a running list in my head of what they'd be. I know. know. Every time I keep thinking I'm going to say my three things at the end of some show. And I'm like, "Eh." but as I'm going through life, I'm like, this is so good. You know, like I've got this yogurt that's not yogurt. It's not milk based. I'm trying to get dairy out of my um, diet. And it's like a so delicious Oh, yeah, yeah. But oh it looks gosh. like yogurt. It it's tastes so just like yogurt. Good. Mm-hmm. I had that after my tonsillectomy because yeah. I didn't want to have dairy, yeah. and I couldn't live without it. Isn't yeah, it I survived amazing? off of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah. go to the store like when I. I think it's at Whole Foods. They have the biggest selection. I'm just like, yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. All this mm-hmm. kind. It doesn't taste things. fake, which is most of those do. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I totally agree with you. I look, you said mascara. Mm-hmm. I found my new favorite mascara. Oh, recently. what is it? It is you know that brand Pixie that's at Target. It's uh-huh. the green one. Yeah, their mascara is incredible. <gasps> like, and it's like paraben free and sulfate free. But oh. like, I have pretty long lashes, so like, they always touch on my face, and I get smudgy and stuff. Okay. And then, or that's clumpy and it doesn't come off well. Like, this is just perfect. It just okay. does all the things, and then it comes off really easy, and it was like $15, wow. something like Pixie. that. Pixie. At Pixie. Target, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always a mascara connoisseur, like, mm-hmm. trying all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. always trying to find something. So, And I don't want to use, like, try to not be as chemically. Yeah, <laughs> my yeah. makeup. <laughs> well, okay, so let me ask you this. It might trigger something. If you were going to buy, if you're like, I need a blouse, where mm. would you go? A blouse. Um, or a shirt. Yeah. Um, What's your I think go-to place? Madewell is a go-to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Madewell and Nordstrom, I think, are my go-tos for, for clothes. But um, Target's new brand, A New Day, is pretty fantastic. It's called New Day? A New Day. A yeah, new they day? got rid of some of their house brands, like Thank Morona. Goodness. That I, mm-hmm. I liked some of their pieces, but yeah, their New Day stuff is my new favorite sweaters from there so mm. yeah so that's been yeah easy and i yeah target's just like everyone it's it's the, and it's easy for a mom i know that yes. like you're already there mm-hmm. getting diapers or totally. whatever yeah and 
They might as well up their game on the on the mm-hmm. clothes because we're gonna buy something. Yep. So yep. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> they yep. might as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because if you want to sell something, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. You might as well get mm-hmm. that going. Yeah. Brooke, you have anything? Mm-hmm. Um, favorite things or lifesavers probably always yoga mm-hmm. and yeah. um, Amazon friends and margaritas. Ooh, Amazon yes. friends and margaritas. Uh-huh. Now yep. that's just something y'all ca- you came up with, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Is a t-shirt that... waiting to happen. Right? <laughs> you should make that into a t-shirt. Amazon friends and margaritas. margaritas. Oh. And yoga. And yoga. And yoga. What's your favorite? Uh, I'll tell you my favorite. If you tell me your favorite margarita place here in Nashville. Oh yes, I will. Um, so Bar Taco on 12 South. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super mm-hmm. fresh. Mm-hmm. I love the jalapeno. Margarita. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. It's only a little spicy. It's only a little? Yeah. Okay. There's, I just think, are the freshest and the best. Mm, but, you know, there's yeah. a few others I like as well. Yeah. I like roast pepper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it for will sure. kick your butt. Yes. I like that. Be careful. Have, like a martini, margarita martini, or a skinny Ooh. margarita that's really good. Mm. I just had a skinny margarita at um, Uncle Julio's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here in town. We just got our first. Being from Texas, you know, yeah, it's totally. Like we got our mm-hmm. first Uncle Julio's, and it's delicious. Awesome. Yeah, I was like, hey, we can do this. <laughs> so, speaking of restaurants, what's y'all's favorite restaurant? Nashville restaurant. Oh, for a, re- a nice night out, hands down, is still Etch is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Etch, oh, yeah. yeah. My favorite higher end, yeah, <laughs> higher end up there is um, fancy. Is uh, Rolf and Daughters. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's a good one. Uh, yep. But standbys, I mean, we don't, that's like once a year. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. What's your go to? Like, my go to was Holland House and it's gone. So, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't like yeah. that story. So, mm-hmm. for people who are not in Nashville, they, up the rent. Yeah. Nashville's mm-hmm. getting so crazy mm-hmm. as, as, I mean, it's good and bad cause it's good for business, but it's also bad for people who have been renting from a certain location and in, in a building. And then all of a sudden the owners are like greedy and think I can make more. Mm-hmm. So, and gentrification's happening everywhere. And so it's eking out the small man and, yeah. and people mm-hmm. that aren't, can't pay that you know, right. those astronomical prices and it's sad. Yeah. And now it just that. sits there empty, you know? Oh, does it? Yeah. Nobody's, there's nothing in there yet. Everybody's boycotting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll personally pick it and go, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't run from here. No. <laughs> but the owners still own the pharmacy and Butcher Town Hall. And I love Butcher Town Hall. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. Butcher Town Hall. So, yeah. That's a good place yeah. too. Yeah. I, that's mm-hmm. definitely a standby. Yeah. Yeah. My go-to. And good margaritas, too. Oh, oh okay. I've never been yeah. there. I mean, mm-hmm. I've never gotten a margarita there. Mm-hmm. I like Moss Tacos is my go-to place. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would yeah. go there once a week if it wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, across town for right. me. <laughs> yeah. I mm-hmm. wish I lived in the na- I neighborhood because I would be Saturday. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think she's got good margaritas there, oh, yeah. too. And they're, and they're cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, ladies. This yeah. has been fun. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting me come in and, and see you guys where you're in action. Yeah, absolutely. I loved hearing about their partnership and how they give each other grace. Treating their staff well is truly the key, as Keila mentioned. They have such a healthy perspective and great business model. I really enjoyed talking with them, and I hope you enjoyed this interview. Today's show was sponsored by Amazon, and music is by Ben Sound at bensound.com. Please consider supporting Rising Stories podcast by purchasing books and products mentioned on the show with the links provided in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening, and keep rising in your story.